The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Oh, hello, Casey. I'm sure glad to see you. Yeah, hi, Ethelbert. Say, what's with Marvin and this me, me, me stuff? Huh? Maybe you can find out. He won't talk. Huh? Hey, Tony, what goes with you and Herman Chittison and that me, me, me noise? Me, huh? me, 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 uh, Hey, Herman, uh, will you give me an A now? Me, 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 me. <laughs> First it's me, 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 and then it's give me an A. Well, what's this A business, anyhow? Why, Casey, A is for Anchor Hawking, the world's largest makers of household glass. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Surprising Corpse. Two o'clock in the afternoon... The living room of a beautifully furnished penthouse apartment. This is Daybell. Yes, Marie? The Comte de Gaston is here. Show him in. Yes, it is Daybell. You may go in, Comte de Gaston. Henriette, my lovely one. Hello, Leon. It was good of you to send for me. I kiss your beautiful hand. Don't. Henriette. Come into the library where we can talk privately. Very well. Sit down, Leon. You are mad at me, Henriette. I can always tell when you are chagrin. It's showing your so lovely eyes. Yes, well, now that we're alone, Count, suppose you drop the phony accent. <laughs> okay, what's the beef? I've advanced you almost $40,000. As you're to get it back with 500% interest, you've made a good investment. I'm not so sure of that. Henrietta, this silly bird brain girl I'm engaged to marry will inherit millions when she's 21, only a year from now. You can't lose. You even took out insurance on my life. Yes, but only for enough to protect my actual loans to you. You see, Leon, I expect a profit as well, and I won't get that unless you marry Paula Durfee and get your hands on her inheritance. Don't worry, she's mad about me. Mm, Her uncle, who controls her estate until she's 21, and her brother Arthur are mad at you. Uh, Paula pays no attention to them. When you drink, you talk too much. What do you mean? Several nights ago at the bar of the Yorkshire Club, you told everybody what you really think of Paula Durfee. Who told you that? I swear... I have reliable informants in many places, Leon. I watch over my investments, and you're one of them. I've not had a loss so far, and I don't intend to have one in you. I'm sorry, Henriette. I drink too much no more. I don't trust you, Henrietta. And because I don't trust you, I want to liquidate your debt. Liquidate? Oh, it'll be to your advantage as well as mine. Would you like to make $100,000 right away? 25% of which goes to me, of course. Would I? My plan may strike you as fantastic, Leon, but this Paula Durfee's a little fool. If she weren't, she wouldn't be in love with you and jealous of you. You're most flattering, Mrs. Zabel. You've uh, an appointment with Paula today, of course? At five o'clock for cocktails. Well, don't drink too much before you meet her, and don't tell her this scheme was the idea of anyone but yourself. You must take all the credit. Go on. Tell me how to get this hundred thousand. This is the way, Leon. When you meet Paula, you tell her in your... Leon, darling, you're not serious about this. My beautiful Paula, I've never been more serious in my life. But it's crazy, my sweet. You had too much to drink before you met me. I have only a few. What is four, five, maybe six cocktails? Where did you have him? At Luardi's bar. With some woman? I am with a man, a man named Casey. I don't know any Casey. There's nobody who takes pictures for the newspapers. I meet him in this cafe, we have a drink together. But I don't trust you. You've been seen with other women. Who sees me with other women? My brother Arthur has seen you, and my uncle. Ah, they tell you this because they do not like me. Oh, 
Paul Legerie. You have proved that I love you madly, that I desire to marry you right away. What I tell you a moment ago is proof of that. What that crazy scheme? It is good scheme. Will you go to your uncle tonight? I'd never convince him. You will. Paul, you are a great actress. What drew me to you when first we meet is the drama in you. I say to myself, there is woman in fire with emotion. She is Bernard. She is uh, Betty Grable. You did me. Upon my love for you, I did. Oh, Leon. Will you go to your uncle in two hours from now and tell him? Would be exciting. It is perfect plan. You thought it up? Certain no. I have a brain. I'll do it. Uncle Clement should give me enough for us to get married on, even if we have to trick him into it. <laughs> Tell me the plan again, Leon. All of it, so when I go to Uncle My dear, <laughs> this is astounding. <laughs> Devastating. I couldn't help it, Uncle Clement. I couldn't help it. Paula... I've tried to take care of you since your parents died. I've tried to shield you. I warned you. I had to do it. And now you've got to protect me, Uncle. You've got to save me. I will, child. Take me to this place. I'll do what I have to do. Why are we turning here, Casey? Annie, won't you ever learn this town? This is a shortcut back to the office. Oh, you and your shortcut. Hey, hmm? that car that just passed us, Annie. What car? Look at the license number. Captain Logan, Homicide Squad. Wait a minute, it's stopping it. He's going to park. Sure is, in front of that brownstone house. Look, Logan and Sergeant Flanagan are getting out and fast. They're here on a job, Casey. Is that it? Let's see what this is all about. You and me both. Come on. What do you suppose they're here for? Oh, what's the use of supposing? We'll know in a minute. Logan just opened the door and walked in. We'll do the same thing. He probably won't like this. Well, so what? They're in that room. Oh, Hi, pal. Casey. What? Just happened to be passing by. Thought we'd drop in. Good hello, evening, Sergeant. Captain. Oh, hello, Casey. Miss Williams. Hi. Well, what you brought you two uncouth characters to this swanky church? Huh? Take a look behind this sofa. Huh? Say. A dead man. Two gunshots. Got him through the head. Hey, that, that, that's the Count. Uh, who? Well, Count Leon de Gaston is what he called himself. He was engaged to that dumb little glamour girl, Paula Durfee. Sure, sure. I've seen her with him around the night spot. This is interesting. How did it happen, Cap Captain? I don't know, Miss Williams. I got a phone call at headquarters and the guy wouldn't give his name. He said a murder had been committed at this address and that we'd find the front door unlocked. He knew what he was talking about. Logan, this body's still warm. Yeah. I'm going to take some pictures of it. No, no, not until I call my tech man. Now, Logan. You heard me. <laughs> Outside door's open. More visitors. Happened in that room, Uncle. Some woman. Get behind this screen. Everybody out of sight. Show me, Paula. Paula. Quiet and keep out of sight. I can't go there again, Uncle. I can't. You must show me where you killed that man. Oh. Oh, please, Uncle Clement. Show me where and how you shot him. All right. Leon stood there behind that sofa, laughing at me. I took the gun, pointed it at him, and pressed the trigger. Right there is where he stood. <laughs> told me the truth. There's his body. No. Oh, no! We've heard enough. You're under arrest, miss. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. That's not what you said a minute ago. But I was lying. Leon can't be dead. He just can't be. Oh, my child. I think introductions are in order, mister. <laughs> I'm Captain Logan, Homicide Bureau. I, I'm Clement Durfee. This is my niece, Paula. Oh, Leon can't be dead. He can't be. It's no use trying to change your story, Miss Durfee. But what I said was all a lie. I didn't, Julian. Please. I didn't. I couldn't. I loved him. The things you heard me say, the story I told my uncle, was Leon's idea. What did she tell you, Mr. Durfee? I... I'd rather not say. Look, a murder has been committed. You gotta. I'll tell you what I told my uncle, but it wasn't true. I said that I was jealous of Leon, that I came here tonight and shot him, but it was all a lie. You were jealous of Count de Gaston, weren't you, Miss Durfee? I... He told me you were when I was with him this afternoon. <laughs> you were with this guy today, Casey? Mm-hmm, for about an hour at Luardi's bar, and he was getting quite a load on, too. Well, maybe he told you about the plan he had. He didn't say anything about a plan. Go on, Miss Durfee. All I told my uncle was part of Leon's plan. He said that if Uncle Clement was convinced I'd committed a murder... 
He'd pay $100,000 to protect me. Really? How was he to pay the $100,000? He was to give it to Batson, Leon Fallot. Leon said he'd arranged everything with Batson. And why was he to give it to this Batson? Well, because Batson would say he'd been a witness to the murder and that he'd gotten rid of the body. And when Uncle came here, he was to see nothing but, but some stains on the floor that would look like blood. Leon said he'd put them here before he went away and hid himself. And, and I was to get the money from Uncle and pretend to pay Batson for his help and his silence. And, and then I was to join Leon at his hiding place and we were going to be married. I don't know who killed him. I don't know. I've heard some pretty fantastic <laughs> stories from murderers, Miss Durfee, but yours stops them all. Oh, Uncle Ken, make him believe me. Uh, my niece told me this man Batson had promised to take the Gaston's body away, Captain. He obviously didn't take the body away. Sergeant, we want to see Batson. Get out a tracer on him. Yes, sir. That's the front door again. More people come into this house. Uh, what? Uh, oh, I, I beg pardon. Who are you? It's Batson. Good evening, Miss Durfee. Batson. Tell them what the Count de Gaston told you to do tonight. Tell them. The Count told me to do nothing tonight, miss. He did. He must have. He was going to give you instructions. I haven't seen the Count since early afternoon, Miss Murphy. You're lying. You're lying. Really, miss. Uh, I say, what's going on here? Step back on this sofa, Batson. Take a look. The, the Count. Good heavens, he, he's dead. Yeah. But who? This very imaginative young woman did the job. I didn't. I didn't. You'll have a hard time convincing anyone of that, Miss Durfee. Uh, Sergeant, phone the squad now and stay in charge here. The rest of us are going to headquarters. Yes, sir, Captain. Logan. Yes, Casey? That gal's story is so completely cockeyed, it might be true. Oh, Casey. Are you nuts? Maybe. But I'm getting what feels like a hunch. <laughs> Only a few years ago, oven glass, glass which could be used for oven baking, was considered an expensive luxury. Anchor Hawking, with its vast laboratory and manufacturing facilities, changed all that by perfecting a new kind of oven glass, more beautiful than anything that had been known before. Guaranteed it for two years against oven breakage and offered it at unbelievably low prices. This new kind of glass is Fire King Oven Glass. You can recognize it immediately by its beautiful pale blue color. A special process makes its mirror-smooth surfaces miraculously easy to clean. Its lighter weight makes it easier to handle. If you've never tried oven glass, why not try it now? Ask for it at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. How in the world? Huh? Now, Grace, look. After all. No, not now. <laughs> oh, dear, these women. Uh, uh, now, uh, Casey, as I was saying, how in the world can uh, you think that dirty gal didn't commit the murder? That's what I'd like to know, too, Ethelbert. Look, I tell both of you, I've got a hunch. They it's thought. the kind of hunch I'd hate to bet on. Well, who's asking you to bet on it? I've noticed that when Casey gets a hunch that a gal's being unjustly treated, Ethelbert, she's usually a very good-looking gal. Mm. Paula Durfee hasn't got a brain in her head, but she has got looks. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Sam. Hey, Walter! Bring up some more lemons. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Annie, listen, I'm telling you, it's because that kid is so brainless that I think that she may have fallen for that crazy plan she says to Gastoni proposed. And then somebody who knew about the plan bumped the guy off, knowing that she'd take the rap oh, for it. Oh, Casey, you haven't got the slightest basis for that. Oh, idea. yes, I have. Yes, I have. That phone call that brought Logan to the Gaston's place. They ain't been able to trace that call? No. Well, a neighbor might have made it, or somebody passing on the street who heard the shots and didn't want to become involved. Oh, no, that's possible. Now, but Casey, I doubt it. the Gaston told you himself that she was madly jealous of him. So tonight she just got too jealous and went bang, bang. Mm. Gaston told me something else this afternoon. As a matter of fact, I'd forgotten it up to now. He'd just come from Mrs. Zabel's place. Mrs. Zabel? Yes. Yeah. Did you make that name up? No, no. Henrietta Zabel, that's her name. Who's she? The hard-boiled dame I know. I wonder. You wonder what? 
Mrs. Zabel always has a few of those fortune hunting guys around her, guys like the gas stone. I've heard she bankrolls them while they're on the make for gals with dough. Well, so what? Well, so I'm going back to headquarters and check a little matter with Logan that I neglected to check before. <laughs> Captain Logan's in his office, Casey, but he's he's busy right now. Yeah, somebody with him, Sarge? Yeah, the brother of that girl who knocked off the gas tone, uh, Arthur Durfee. Oh, yeah, that Paula kid's his only sister. Uh, just two of them, huh? Yeah. Well, Arthur's about five years older than she is, I think. He's another case of too much dough. Uh-huh. He got his share of the Durfee millions when he reached 21, and he's yeah. been oh, spending oh, it. He's leaving the him. office now, Keith. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Durfee. I deeply regret the trouble that's come upon you and your uncle and your sister. That you must realize that I have a job to do. Yes, I, I realize that, Captain Logan. I can promise you she'll undergo no unnecessary hardships. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Captain. Tough luck, fella. Uh, who? I'm just a newspaper guy. I want you to know that I'm all for your sister. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You want to see me, Casey? Yeah, Logan, yeah. Now, come on in. Uh, the toughest thing a cop ever has to do is talk to relatives of a prisoner he's shoving toward the chair. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind, Casey? Logan, you traced all phone calls to and from DeGaston's home today. Yeah. Did DeGaston make a call from his home not long before he was shot? Uh, yeah, it's here in the report. Yeah, to whom? My... Uh, Mrs. Henrietta Zabel. Uh, Mrs. Zabel, huh? Yeah. Lives in a swanky penthouse over on the boulevard. Yeah? She's 100%. 100% what? Well, okay. What makes you so sure of that? Oh, I went over and talked to her myself. She admits to Gaston phoned her. Makes no secret about it. Says they were old friends. Yeah? What did he call her about? Yeah, she doesn't know. She was out at the time. The maid answered. Uh, oh, where was she out at the time the Gaston was shot? How do I know? I don't ask everyone I talked to for an alibi when I got the killer in a cell. I don't think you have the killer Are in a cell. Are you going to start that again? Yes, Logan, I am. And you're going to help me prove that I'm right. Oh. Logan, look. Now, I've met this Mrs. Zabel, and she's a foxy character. And... Uh, De Gaston hadn't enough imagination himself to cook up the scheme that Paula claims she fell for. But my hunch says that Mrs. Zabel put him up to it. Casey, there wasn't any scheme. But you don't know there wasn't. You've got to give that Durfee kid a chance. What do you want me to do? I want Mrs. Zabel watched in her telephone wire tap. Hey, I... You can do it, Logan. You can do it. And be sure it's done by the time that I visit her tomorrow. So you're going to visit the lady? Yeah. I'm going to pull a bluff that I think she'll fall for. Mrs. Zabel will see you in the library, sir. Thank you. Mr. Casey, madam, come in. Thank you, Mrs. Zabel. Well, I seldom forget a face, Mr. Casey. We've uh, met before, haven't we? Well, yes, I've taken pictures of you several times for the Cafe Society pages. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, May I close this door? If you wish. Thank you. Is it customary for uh, press photographers to require such privacy? <laughs> well, I, I'm not here as a press photographer. Oh, then what? A... I really want to talk to you about Leon de Gaston. Well? I spent over an hour with him yesterday at Luardi's Cafe. He'd been drinking and was uh, talkative. Really? Yeah. He told me about the idea you'd given him. Interesting. I think the cops would find it so, if I told them. They might connect it with a phone call to Gaston made to you shortly before he was shot, while you were not at home. They might wonder who phoned headquarters to report the murder of the Gaston, and they might wonder who really killed the Gaston. What do you think? I wonder why you haven't told this to the um, cops. <laughs> Because you're a rich woman and I'm a poor guy. Blackmail. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's say you do me a favor and I do one for you. Can you suggest any motive I might have had for committing a murder? I think the cops might be able to dig one up. A motive, perhaps, that would mean a profit for you or prevent a loss. Hmm. Uh. Okay, Mrs. Zabo. Until tomorrow. <laughs> So 
Logan, you, you, you say she made a phone call right after I left her, huh? Yeah, but not from her own phone that I had a tap on. She went out to a public booth, so my guys don't know what she talked about. Oh. But we traced the call she made to Clement Durfee's home. Paula's uncle. Uh -huh. So he's her partner in this scheme. Well, now, wait a minute. Look, Logan, look. If, if you'd just been threatened by a blackmailer who accused you of conniving in a murder that you had connived in, wouldn't your first act be to contact the other party to your killing? I guess so, but... Well, Mrs. Zabel fell for my bluff, Logan. Because she framed the scheme that DeGastone and his gal friend fell for. And she framed it with Clement Durfee. But why Durfee? Remember, he handles Paul as a state, Logan. In a year, he'd have to turn it over to her, but with her out of the way... But why should Mrs. Zabel... Well, she'll do anything for dough, won't she? And he's paying plenty for what she did. But we'll get them both, Logan. And with the goods... I hooked her today. Tomorrow, when she tries to pay me blackmail, you'll be there to pull her in. Well, she's a swell-looking woman with a head full of brains, all right. Mm -hmm. And that little Paul is a beautiful thing, too. Excuse me. Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan speaking. This is Mrs. Zabel, Captain. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Zabel. <clears throat> How do you do? I'd like to see you as soon as possible, if I may. Logan, she's all set for a confession. Shut up. Uh... <clears throat> What do you want to see me about, Mrs. Zabel? Well, I'd like to report the threat to the blackmailer, a press photographer named Casey. Um, uh, very interesting, Mrs. Zabel. I'm anxious to hear about him. Will you come to my home as soon as possible, alone? Uh, yeah, I'll be there in half an hour. Then I'll expect you. Goodbye. You uh, heard that, Casey? Yeah, I heard it. You put something over on her. <laughs> Wise guy. And that's a full account of the man's clumsy blackmail attempt, Captain Logan. And a true account. Mm -hmm. How do you know it's true? No, oh, uh, I know this, Casey, Mrs. Zabel. I, I can figure he'd pull things like you said. Mm. Now I want to tell you something else. Yeah, go on. Um... That man, Casey, was right. I did suggest the plan that Paula Durfee told you about. Uh, what? Yes, I gave it to Leon de Gaston in detail, and I told him to make Paula go through with it. Well, then No, you... I didn't kill him. Somebody else made dupes of all of us. Who's that somebody else? Telling you won't be so convincing as letting you see and hear for yourself. And now, look here, Mrs. This Zabel. will be done my way, Captain, or not at all. Well, let's hear your way. Can you install a radio contrivance in my car that will permit you and a car following to hear what's said? Yeah, my man can. Then have it done at once and follow me tonight. Where's she going in that car of hers, Logan? I told you she wouldn't tell me a thing, Casey, except to follow her, and we're doing that. She might give us a word occasionally through that radio gadget you had installed in the car. Now, she's going to play this the way she wants it. Hey, you know, she is a swell-looking woman, Casey. Yeah. Hmm. Not so young as Miss Durfee, of course. Oh, no, not nearly as young. But swell-looking. Swell-looking. All right, all right, all right. You both agreed that they're both beautiful, gentlemen. Hey, she's slowing down, Logan. She's going to stop. Uh, I'll slow down, too. Hey, a man's getting into her car. Couldn't see his face. Neither could I. She's starting up again. Ah. Thanks for picking me up, Henrietta. That guy's voice. That radio gadget works pretty good. Oh, quiet. I uh, didn't want you to come to my house. Yes, in the car here. I'm sure no one can hear us. Who's the man, Casey? Can't get his voice. Neither can I. So, uh, Henrietta, you listen. think we are under suspicion of murder. Yes, and I have no intention of facing a murder charge I don't merit. <laughs> you suggested that little plan to the Gaston. Mm, whose plan was it? Well, since we're quite alone, it was mine. But you didn't tell me you really planned to murder Leon. I thought you were only helping me recover my money. Oh, uh, you know my real motive? Yes. You wanted a murder conviction and death for your sister. His sister? It's Arthur Durfee still. You see, um, I've spent my share of the estate, but with Paula out of the way, I'd get her share too. I couldn't allow a little fool like Paula to get that money when I needed it, could I? You think you'll get away with it? Oh, you'll never tell anyone. What? You think I'd have said what I have if you were going to live? Step on it, Logan. And fast. I'm stepping. 
Look at that car behind us. What? Oh, you cut the ignition. And threw the key out of the window. What a gal. I'll say. It's all over for him now. Sure is. That car's stopping. Come out of that car, Mr. Arthur Durfee, with your hands in the air. What's the meaning of this? Ooh, we're finishing your perfect plan, fella. For keeps. And Mrs. Zabel... Why, Mr. Casey, I'm what? going to ask a favor of you. May I kiss you? Hey. Uh, excuse me, Annie. Thanks, Mrs. Zabel. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Casey. Well, I like that. I was just apologizing, Annie, and congratulating uh, Henrietta. We'll discuss your methods later, Mr. Casey. <laughs> It's now possible to tell almost exactly what Americans think on almost any given subject. An independent research organization recently conducted a poll in an eastern city to find out what kind of containers housewives prefer for foods. An overwhelming majority said that they preferred glass containers, and most of them mentioned these four reasons. Glass lets you see exactly what you buy before you buy it. Glass containers are clean and sanitary. They don't affect flavor or purity. Glass containers are easier and safer to open and can safely be used to store leftovers. Now, in the same survey, eight out of nine mothers of young babies said they preferred prepared baby foods packed in glass. Most of your favorite food products and all of the better brands of prepared baby foods are now available in anchor glass containers, protected by tamper-proof anchor vacuum cap. Both products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. So, Arthur Durfee's in the clink, Casey, and his sister's free, huh? Yep, Ethelbert, yep. And Logan's treating me respectfully for a change. I don't know why you had this case all wrong. Uh, even if Mrs. Zabel wasn't guilty, she led us to the murderer, didn't she? That's right. She did and you didn't. Well. All you did was push your way in for that apologetic, congratulatory kiss at the end. Uh, Annie, my, my emotional nature got the best of me, that's mm. She's a nice-looking woman, that Mrs. Zabel. She'll never see 45 again. So what? Age brings experience. Hmm. No, but experience isn't really necessary. Casey, what did that young, good-looking Paula do when they let her out of the pokey? Uh, <clears throat> well... Oh, yes, yes, tell him, Mr. Casey. Ethelbert, she kissed Logan. And as for you, Ethelbert, what's that on your lips? That uh, looks who? like... Me? Good night, Ethelbert. Huh? Oh, good night, Grace. Oh, dear, these women... Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. A great name in glass. is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, the world's largest makers of household glass. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.